How's it going, everybody? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Lee is so excited. He made it here from the beginning. All right. Craig from Scotland. I saw Mark M was numero uno to make a comment. Thanks for being here, Mark. Always good to see you. Father Time is here. All right. Nick and Cardi and Aza and Milobi. Frank Jawbreaker. How's it going, everybody? Michael Jorgen, Ray. Woohoo! Daniel made it. How's everybody doing? I got home from work about uh, a little more than 30 minutes ago. A little more than 30 minutes ago. And uh, I thought, oh, that's time enough. We can do this. We can do this. Hey, from sunny Florida. Proxmox convert today. Is that your, is that your uh, goal? Gone too long? Hey, from North England. How's it going, Andy? Someday I'm going to get around to see all these places. New Jersey. I've looked at New Jersey from across the river. <laughs> Dr. Zico. How's it going? Poland? All right. Hope you're doing good too. I am. Thank you. Regarding cameras, is it possible to somehow control a wise pan from in-home assistant? Uh, uh, no, not very easily. It's possible. Maybe. So I have one. And there was a time when I had it uh, hooked up with RTSP, with the RTSP feed. I don't remember though, so I could see the image in Home Assistant, but I don't remember if I was able to do the pan tilt stuff in Home Assistant. Does anybody have one of these that they know? I haven't uh, tried. I think all I needed to do, I think what happened was the IP address just changed. I hadn't reserved it. And the IP address changed, but then I wasn't using it anyway, so it's just been sitting here. I took it down off the mantle uh, when we were getting ready for Christmas decorations, and I just haven't done anything else with it. No idea how to control it if it's possible. Um, do you have it in Blue Iris, Milobi? Uh, Blue Iris has some generic uh, controls. I, I don't know. I'm a bad one to ask, man. Yeah, John, isn't that sad? That is sad. That was quite a shocker. Hey, William. Yeah, whole world is mo mo mourning uh, Kobe Bryant today. That's pretty sad. But life's short. Live it up while you got it. What'd you miss, Piston? Not too much, man. Yeah, check Blue Iris and see if you can see if Blue Iris will pan it up and down. And if it does, then I think you're you're you sh you have the potential then to make those things happen in home assistant now and when i have had success with a pan tilt camera following commands in home assistant though it hasn't been a direct um like i push to the right and it pans to the right i push to the left it pans to the left what has worked well and this was with the amcrest component back a year plus ago i'm sure it still works but i haven't i haven't had it working haven't bothered using it in a long time you in the Amcrest app could set presets. So you have a preset view. It's looking at this door, but it's a pan tilt camera. So it can also look at that door over there and you could set presets for door number one and door number two and door number three, whatever. And then uh, through the home assistant uh, component, you could call those presets. So look into doing something like that. It probably would be more effective uh, and easier to set up if you have presets and you just tell Home Assistant to tell Blue Iris, probably, if you can control it through Blue Iris, if you can get it to, to call those preset views. Anybody doing that? That's a good way. That's, that's the way to use, that's the way to use, uh, pan tilts, I think. Better than actually panning around. All right. You got your stickers, Chris? My poor wife, Vanessa, or whose poor wife? Oh, Col Kobe's poor wife. Yeah, man. Life is short, man. Life is short. Live it up. What a great guy, though, you know? People, everybody's sharing memories of Kobe. I remember Kobe was the, he was like the, um, he was the clean cut kid, right? And Shaq was kind of a jerk. And everybody for a long time thought, wow, Kobe's a nice guy and, and Shaq's a jerk. And, and then, um, and then Kobe got, you know, kind of busted with, having an affair and uh tarnished his reputation significantly um 
but she stuck with him. As far as I know, this wife he's got now is the same wife and, uh, she stuck with him and, and, um, he got through all that stuff and went on to just be a stellar dude, stellar dude. So sad. I saw if you watch, um, if you watch a lot of sports center, you probably know Stephen A. Smith. He's a very vocal, uh, I think he was a basketball player, but he, he now commentates or, or gives opinions about every sport in the U S and, and even others, other places. But he, um, I saw his little interview today about Kobe and he was in tears. He was, he was, he was hurting. So anyway, um, what devices do you have for home assistant? Zigbee stick, Z-Wave module, et cetera, or do you focus mainly on Wi-Fi devices? Thanks. That's a good question, Bjorn. Um, I, Joy, Joy Bjorn, Joy Bjorn, Joy Bjorn. <laughs> I have mostly Wi-Fi devices, almost entirely. I do have some sensors that are Zigbee and I have uh, some sensors that are RF, like 433 megahertz um, battery, battery powered sensors. So that's most of what I have, but Wi-Fi is the majority of it. And then probably equal numbers of Zigbee and uh, the RF ones. For the RF ones, I have a bridge, so, uh, the Sonoff bridge with Tasmoda. And for the Zigbee stuff, I have the Combi 2 dongle plugged into my USB port on my uh, Home Assistant box. And uh, I use decons through Home Assistant through the add-on. So everybody got their stickers? That's great. That's great to hear. Oh, Nick, you didn't miss much, man. You didn't miss too much. Uh, let's see. Evening, Doc. Got some WLED lights set up for my parents. Awesome. Hey, Doc. Is he finally catching the live stream? Thanks for all your videos. I am so excited that there's new people finally catching a live stream that we're going to do this one because I like it. Do you know something to translate RF 435 megahertz to 433? Edgar, I think, check the new, I think the new RF bridge, but I don't know 100% sure. I don't know 100%. I don't, because I think uh, so Sonoff, for some dumb reason, they had some, I think four, four, maybe it was 440, 345, whatever, 300 something. I thought it was 315. But anyways, they had some 300 and something megahertz devices. And then they had the bridge, which was 433. And I don't, I don't know what, but I think now I think they might have a new one. Just noticed the stream has gone live. Good evening, folks. Better late than never. How's it going, Tony? Hey, from France, won't taste too long. I understand. It's probably a little bit um, a little bit late for you guys. I know this is later than I like to do it, but hey, I'm feeling good. I actually didn't have to go in in the morning. I stayed up late last night, but I didn't have to go in in the morning. Um, so I got to sleep in until about 8.30, which was pretty nice. Usually I'm up at 6. Anyone flash the RF chip successfully on the bridge? I have not, Andy. I have not. I know Jenny, uh, Pinky Wafer has, but I also know like Rob hookup Rob has failed multiple times in trying. So, it, um, I don't think it's super easy. James. Hello. Finally catching the stream. Now that the NFL is over <laughs> for one more week, right? Hey, mate. Adrian's here. How's it going, Adrian? Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. I was, uh, I was on the phone with whiskers on the, on the discord chat with whiskers, uh, for a while. There you go. Pinky's here. How's it going, Jenny? So she's got hers running great. And I, does it do four or 315? Jenny, what do you know about 315? What do you know about the 315 megahertz stuff? Flash the RF on two version two bridges. Oh, all right. What do you say, Cardi? Any more updates on the bug? Uh, other than I cleaned the garage yesterday. <laughs> um, let's see. So I, I, what day did I, I posted, did you guys see my, I'm sure I posted. I'm trying to remember, trying to put things together in uh, chronological order in my brain. I think, yes, actually, Father Time, I think I do have a pretty good update on the bug. If we look at some of my pictures, or at least if we look at, maybe we can just look at Twitter. Twitter? Because I think I tweeted the Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's my email. Remember when it did my phone number that time? That was awesome. Hey, Quindor's here. How's it going, buddy? Yes, that's correct email. All right, let's look at mine. Nope. Uh, bug motor is in. Yes, this one. Instagram. Did you guys see this? This was Tuesday, I think. 
me? That was probably not. And I looked this up a few minutes ago. Yeah, because this was right before I streamed that day, because I was still winded, I think, right? <laughs> uh, so, oh, it's just going to keep going. No, don't just keep going. All right, so that's that's the last update. I haven't gone back out there since then. I do, what I was hoping to do possibly was get the, um, uh, get my phone to stream from the phone and just stream while I work on it. Uh, so I, I think that'll be fun, but I want to make sure that I've got like some decent sound. So I think what I'll end up doing is wearing one of those lapel mics that I did a review on that plugs into the phone. So we'll see. Hopefully that'll be the, that'll be the magic thing to do, but we'll see. I may be, I'm toying with the idea of taking tomorrow off. Sometimes I get the option. I probably shouldn't because I haven't been working much anyways, and I'm going to China in a couple of weeks, but, uh, my config rerig, uh, you know what, Andy? I took the step back after the, the stream, and I and I haven't gone back into it yet. I chatted with James a little bit about it, but I haven't gone back in and and uh, tinkered with it uh, since then. So for now, it's it's back to the way it was. So Frank and his three D printer budget are safe. <laughs> this UI, what is this UI? This is if you go to the community page and there's themes here. And it's one of these themes. It is, in fact, the iOS dark theme, I think. iOS light? No, iOS dark. It's the iOS dark theme. And then I had to do a little bit of funkiness to get it to show up, uh, to get the background image to show up. Um, but it wasn't too hard to do. Oh, you know what I did get? Uh, also, since Quindor's here, I did get all my parts now for my Quinn LED board so I can finish making those. That's awesome. Uh, can I cover the Shelly for Hass integration? I use that instead of Tasmoda, but struggle with two function switch. Toggle to turn on long press, piss off the wife. Yeah, we don't want to piss off the wife. Uh, Shelly for Hass integration? I didn't know about this. I guess I've just, when I've done the Shelly, I just done um, MQTT discovery or something like that. And that's it. Um, all right, thank you, K Cam. Let's do unicorns. We should probably take. I should probably. I've been. I've been trying to uh, be better focused. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Me better focused. Uh, thank you, Plux, for following. Um, let me, let me, uh, let me talk about a couple things that people have asked about before I answer new questions. Oh, the NHL sensor. There I go. See that? You see how that quickly uh -huh. that happened? Hey, Will. <laughs> I found the NHL sensor free live game data score events. Tomorrow night will be the test. No Google calendar integration needed for linking. Oh, dude, I would love to see that happen. That ain't no diet, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> That is Diet Dr. Pepper, right there. All right, so um, let's let's talk about this if you'd like first, because people are asking about the rounded corners. That is part of the theme. So that is in the theme. So when you get these themes, and again, community page, themes, and you can just grab these themes and they will download into, uh, if you don't have any yet, I believe it makes the folder already for you. If you do have some, um, you should already have a themes folder and this will put them in your themes folder, which is down here. I was playing with my secrets, uh, file. So let's make sure that my secrets file is closed. <laughs> okay. And it is, uh, so we're safe. Uh, let's look at in the themes folder. Uh, when you download one of those themes, it just goes in there and here's the iOS dark mode. And somewhere in here was the thing about rounded corners. And I can't remember where it was. Background, background, ground, ground. Maybe it was someplace else. 
Does anybody know where it was? I thought it was in here, but I guess this is only going to be colors, right? Maybe there's another part of it. I don't remember. Style? Oh, okay. Thank you. Look for radius. Okay. Yes, that makes that. There you go. There you go. There you go. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. Thank you, John and Milobi. Here we go. HA card border radius, 20 pixels. So that's where you can change how much of a bend, how much of a corner there is on those boxes like that. Okay. And then uh, while I'm here, I will just show you that what I had to change, and this isn't something that everybody has to change apparently, but what I had to change was this line right here. Um, I think in the original theme, it comes in as just background or something or background image. And then there's like this crazy long hex uh, code thing since you can't in so that the image is sort of embedded, I guess, or something. Um, but what I did was I just changed it because that wasn't working for mine for some reason. So I just had to uh, download the actual image that I want as the background, put it in my www folder, which is the local. Uh, which is here is called local, but in the actual, in actualness, it's in here. So that, that uh, image is in here somewhere, home kit. Yep. It's one of those, right? So it's one of those images there and then it just needs this line. So if anybody wants it in case you have troubles, here it is. And that's it. And that's all I changed. Oh, and then I did change some of these things. Like I changed the uh there was a color that i didn't like it was like an orange or something so i changed it to a blue and then i did this 0.7 uh on the um opacity to just make it so that when i pull up a menu like i don't know which is a good one to show you a menu of something without turning something off yeah see how that's kind of transparent you can see behind it that's what that point seven did in that line there. So, all right, cool. We covered that. I must have a different version of hacks. I don't have all those tabs, only overview and store. Oh, here, over here on the side, you only have overview and store or at the top? Oh, oh, the community store. I'm sorry. Really? You don't have all these? Maybe you do have a different version. Yeah. What version of uh, hacks do you have? Uh, let's see. Oh, this is the hacks community store. So I'm on version 0 0.2, 0 0.8. Radius for each card separately in the configuration editor. Awesome. Milobi's a Milobi year. Must be oh, everything will be all right. Oh, good. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, yours says one. Yeah, you, so maybe update it. Definitely. Because I know Themes wasn't even there a while ago. Like at the beginning, Themes wasn't there. Didn't have Themes showing up until I changed something on your configuration.yaml. Oh, that might be true too. I think when you go here to Themes, the first time, like say you pick a theme, if you go to the repository, I think it gives you some instructions. Maybe that's not where it gives it. But yes, there. oh, that was 1M Tech. Nice. I didn't know he was doing those. Look at that, 1M Tech. Yeah, that's a way, brother. Subscribe on YouTube. Um, okay, here we go. Here we go. Preparation. Yes, you do need to do some things. Um, so you need to have this in your configuration. Okay, so it will grab things out of the themes folder. That's one thing you have to do. And then I guess this part's all fine. Home assistant config folder, new folder named themes. Yeah. So go to any one of those themes uh the the uh github for it or the uh whatever you're going to call this page instruction page scroll down and it should give you some instructions here i'll give you this so you guys have that if you want make it easy how and where do you find hacks oh man how and where do you find hacks you know what i can't remember anymore i did a video about it did it change after the video though do you guys remember I think it did a little bit. The link to the community store. I'm trying to remember. 
how you get the community store. And da, 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 da. we could probably find it. It's not it's not too hard. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. Oh, did I post my internal link? <laughs> Is that not gonna work? <laughs> uh, uh. Okay, here you go. This is where you, this is all the instructions. And Ludias is available on, um, on Discord a lot. So, you know, don't bombard him with simple things. If you, if you, uh, have trouble, I'm sure he's happy to help, but he's done a really good job of getting, um, we're putting your instructions here for you. So follow those instructions if you don't have the community store and definitely get the community store because not only does it give you the themes, which is new, plugins are actually, um, custom Lovelace cards, so custom user interface cards. Uh, and then and then we have things like integrations um, that are going to be, uh, these are like what we would have called the custom components in the past, I think, right? Custom components and app daemon apps. I don't really use any of those. But anyways. The, the the community store, Homes the Community Store is a great place for a lot of good stuff. All right, you're finally catching the live stream, Jeff. Hey, Will Steele's here too. How's it going? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Hacks.xyz. I'm sure you can find the link, Vanessa. Do you need me to send you another one? I'm sorry. That's funny. Um, Give the doc a few likes. He's helping you out. Thank you, sir. Good enough. Good to see you, brother, by the way. Um, all right. Now, the other thing that somebody was asking was about, well, let's see, we talked about the corners. And then what was the other thing that somebody asked about? So they asked about the camera. I answered best I could. Um, you guys were talking about the bridge and what megahertz. Uh, there was something else, something else. I almost wrote it down. I actually grabbed my little notepad to write it down. And then, you know, how that goes. <laughs> Uh, Shelly for Hass, the integration. That's what I was going to look at. Yeah, I don't know much about that. So I was going to look in, I was actually going to look in the community store and see what we could find in the Shelly here. Shelly Smart Home platform for Home Assistant. Okay, I've never used it. Here we go. This is a plug-in platform for Shelly Smart Home Wi-Fi devices. The plug-in communicate locally with the devices. You can also enable cloud connection. Uh, now it has to use the names of devices. That's awesome. So this, so with this, you don't need MQTT anymore, right? Local only communication can work in parallel with MQTT or Shelly Cloud for mobile access. So it can, you can do both, but you don't have to. Immediate response uses C A C O A P events from Shelly. Not working the network. This is cool. This is very cool. I'm definitely going to install this bad boy. What do we got to do down here? Nothing. When installed, this will be located in Custom Components Shell. You still need to add it to your configuration.yaml file. Okay. Installation with hacks. Just search for Shell, install it directly. It will keep track of updates. Configure when you have installed Shell, make sure it exists under Custom Components. It's time for configuring Home Assistant. Very easy. Just add Shelly colon to your configuration.yaml. That's easy. To get the device name from the Shelly cloud. Uh, so that's if you wanted to do, if you wanted to use the cloud stuff. Okay. You will get information of the keys. Okay. Get click key without discovery manually, specific devices with discovery. Interesting. I haven't used this, but we should play with it, don't you think? I actually even have a Shelly device uh, over here we could do with this. Would hold off on China for now, I, Robert. Yeah, so I, I, we've obviously been talking about that. And uh, what, what my wife and I have discussed and what we agree on is that we will follow whatever recommendations come from whatever uh, authorities are issuing recommendations. So the, where we're going is Shenzhen. It's like a thousand kilometers from Hu, uh, Wuhan where they're having the virus problem. Um, and if, but we do have to fly through Beijing, which is closer. Um, so that's all. 
that's all for that. I think really the it, what it comes down to is what are the, you know, what's the CDC, the Center for Disease Control here in the U.S. What are they going to say about traveling to China in three weeks from now? Which we're not leaving for three more weeks. But what are they saying at the time based on the places we're going? If they say we're going, if they say it's okay, we'll go. If they say don't go, it's not safe, we don't go. Simple as that. I'm not going to read into it any more than that. I'm going to let the experts decide. If they say it's safe, I'm okay with it being safe. So, uh, plug in works like a charm. Struggle with automations for the Shelly. I'll post details in Discord later. Okay, okay, Joe Born, thank you. Uh, also saw one M Tech showed a very powerful event ghost. It's so complicated. <laughs> All right, finally got WOL. Okay, good. Oh, you're late. What did you miss, Ramon? I don't remember. We can back up and start over. <laughs> uh, Mark Percival's here. How's it going, man? ESP home on your Shelly's? Uh, no, I don't think I do. I think I just have. I think I only have one installed. I'm bad. I have like a whole box of them and all these all these um, great intentions to do things with them, but I haven't done anything with them. Um, I will play with that though. I will play with that. Let's install it. Let's do the install part at least. Hey, D. Great. Uh, another baby Yoda. Wait, another? Mm-hmm. I, did you not see the one I printed for the girls? Go ask them. They've got one. 3D printed a, a baby Yoda last night. <laughs> I need a rewind effect for when peeps show up late. Happens almost every stream. Another tool for your tool belt. That'd be cool. <laughs> I'll look like an emoticon. Me? <laughs> Dim in another tab. Oh, yeah. That's Destiny Item Manager. <laughs> Does anybody play Destiny? <laughs> a few, a few items here to sort through. <laughs> hey Nick, thanks brother. That's awesome. There's my, there's my new baby Yoda that's printing. Nick, you get, you get the planes, trains, and automobiles, my friend. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Are you a pilot? Or are you just hanging out in a plane? Just like planes? That's cool, dude. <laughs> Thanks a bunch, Nick. I hope to have helped you out uh, along the way here. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate that. So today, I managed to get connected working properly and managed to tasmatize some Yagala cheap smart plugs from Amazon, all with the help of my videos. Wow. Well, fantastic. Are you allowed to post links? You can try, Matthias. And if it doesn't let you, sometimes the mods can approve them. Uh, if not, Post it, but look like take the dot out and just write dot or or post it in Discord or get, you send it to one of the mods and they can post it probably. What camera do you use? Uh, so I use Octoprint, which there is actually an uh, an Hass IO add-on for. So you could be, I'm running this on a Raspberry Pi that's been running for, we're getting close to four years now that I've had this thing. Uh, so I haven't... Um, I haven't changed over to the add-on because I don't need to, but it's running It's running Octoprint and part of Octoprint, if you plug in a Raspberry Pi camera, excuse me, to the cam to the Raspberry Pi, it just displays the image for you. So I haven't tried it yet, Will. I know I haven't tried it yet, but I was on the phone with Whiskers last night for a long time. We were working on WireGuard. What I have tried, what I have tried and what is working awesomely, is that a word? Sure, of course it's a word. What is working awesomely is the WireGuard add-on. We haven't talked about WireGuard in a long time, but getting ready to go on this trip to China, I thought I want to make sure that I've got the VPN and uh, working. And so Whiskers was kind enough last night uh, to uh, take some time out, spend it with me on, on Discord. And I think, honestly, he said it was a half an hour. I thought it was a little longer than that, but it seemed really fast. We got it done. We got it done really fast. And it was Frank's add-on. And then just having whiskers there to kind of make sure that I put the right things in the right places. And what we set up was, um, so if this sounds if this sounds good to you, then you need to work on on getting on the WireGuard add-on. And it definitely needs a video. It definitely needs a video. But what I need is to win the lottery so that I can stop going to work and just make videos all the time, right? <laughs> but if this sounds good to you, then 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 WireGuard is for you. So what I've got now is on my 
laptop and on my phone, I have what's called what they're calling on demand VPN connections. So anytime that I'm not in my house, it connects to VPN through it connects to my house through WireGuard through WireGuard tunnel. Um, but it only uses that tunnel to access local IP addresses in my home network. So the 192.168.1. whatever. So it only does those addresses. So if I search Google or if I go to YouTube, it doesn't use my home internet connection for that stuff in the on demand mode. And then anytime I leave the house, it just, that, that happens. And I did the same thing on the laptop. So if I'm at work and I just open my laptop and it's connected to the Wi-Fi at the hospital, if I want to look at my WLED boards, I don't have to open a port or do anything. I can just pop open my local IP addresses and look at whatever I want. Um, that's awesome. And then I also have, uh, a separate connection that is a full VPN connection so that all the traffic on the phone or all the traffic on the laptop is actually going through my house. So I'm figuring if I'm in China, as long as I can connect to my, you know, DNS URL, um, you know, my home, my home IP address, my, my public IP address for my house, as long as China is not blocking that, then once I get into my house, now I can access everything else as if I were here. So that's cool, right? What is that little red thing up there? You guys see that? I can't read what that says. Oh, that went away. Looked like it was some kind of warning. So you don't need to give each item a second IP address for WireGuard too. Uh, WireGuard gives them an IP address, but not each individual device in my house. No, you just give it a range. So basically you're saying this entire subnet, 192.168.1, dot zero through all of them. Uh, anytime I want to access one of those, it'll do it. Did WireGuard with your video on the 12 streams last year, still working well. Awesome. Hey, Jeff, how's it going? I would, uh, you do that with OpenVPN. OpenVPN is another really good one, of course. Ooh, I didn't do WireGuard. I didn't know WireGuard did that. That's neat. I'm convinced now. Thanks, Thanos. It's it's cool, man. And it's so nice. It's just really easy. And now they have um, an app in the App Store for Android or iOS. And they have a client. I guess they have a client for Windows too, but they have they don't have one for Mac. And it's super easy. I mean, it, like I said, with, with Whiskers last night, it took me like half hour. Yeah, he's a pro, so it makes it easy. But yeah, it was awesome. Please don't forget to smash that like button. <laughs> Thank you, Father Time. Journey a bit late. Any talk about WireGuard being part of the cord of Unraid now too? Oh, I don't know. Uh, not that I know about. I don't know anything about Unraid though. I don't use it. Um, uh, Travis would be the guy to talk to about that. Have I seen the Linux Tech's tip video about setting up your own hosted VPN for cheap? No, I haven't, Ray. I haven't. But I think basically that's what I have now, right? The Z. Hello, Dr. Z's from the Z. <laughs> so is WireGuard the way to access your home alarm remotely? Man, WireGuard is a way to access your home everything remotely. You basically open one port and that's all. And that's for WireGuard. And if, if anything tries to connect to that port and doesn't have the right keys, a matching key on both ends and all, it's no, nothing's getting in. And then once you're in, once you are in through that port, you can access everything as if you were home. So if you wanted to access your cameras, your, uh, you know, all of your local things like your lights or your alarm system or all your home system, like you don't even need with that right there, you wouldn't need Nabucasa to access home assistant from away from home. You, it would still be, uh, you'd still want Nabucasa for things like the Alexa and, oh, sorry, the Amazon Echo and the <laughs> Google home integration stuff. But as far as the remote access, you wouldn't need it anymore. WireGuard is a tunnel to a server. Be it your home or a VPN server on the net for safe surfing. Yep. WireGuard is my home VPN. So you're on your local, like, like I'm at home. That's right, Bob. That's right. But then since my home is connected to the internet, then I, then everything that, that I do through a VPN into my home, it's like I'm sitting at my house on my laptop instead of sitting in China. My whole network is available to me. Yes. Nabucasa to support home assistant development. And of course that too, Gwendor. Yes, yes. I just, I just love buy, thinking of Nabucasa as once a month, I get to buy Paulus a, a sandwich or a beer, whatever he wants. You know, five bucks, 
for the joy I get out of it, it's a no-brainer. May have missed it, but did you install WireGuard on your router? No, Jawbreaker, I installed WireGuard as, so WireGuard is an add-on now. And if I can do this without revealing all of my WireGuard, uh, my WireGuard uh, info. So if you go to the HassIO tab and you look for add-ons that are available, you can search for WireGuard, right? I guess if you go to add-on store, you can search for WireGuard. I already have it installed, but just WireGuard. There it is. Okay. Um, I'm going to open this over here just to screen it briefly. Um, as long as I don't scroll down too far. Okay. Should be fine. Okay. Just, just checking, making sure. Uh, then this is it. So there's Frank's got, of course, some, uh, pretty good instructions. There was part of it. <laughs> pretty good instructions. Um, on how to get it installed and what to do. WireGuard page for details. Here you go. Um, and he's got an example configuration. The things you needed, the things you need is you need this to be, you can do a duck DNS URL or you can, I mean, I guess you could do your, your IP address, but it, if it, if your internet service provider changes your IP address then that's a problem. So that's why you use DNS, duck DNS or whatever, so that you can have a URL that doesn't change even if your, your home, uh, public IP address changes. So get a duct DNS, put that in there. Um, this was the part, let's see, what did I put in here? I can't remember. This is an extensive example. Okay. He has a, he has a basic example of if you don't start the, um, add on, but basically I can't remember what, so I, I had in here, whatever he had for his basic stuff. It was pretty simple. I can't remember what it was now. Um, the public keys you need in here, a name, this is for each client and each client gets another, gets an IP address in this, uh, this subnet right here, whatever you make it. So this is, so here's one peer, it's this one, Frank. Okay. It's dot two. And then he's got another one here named Ninja. Wait, why? Oh no, that's, is that the same one? No, it's a, it's a different one. I don't know why he doesn't have a key here. Anyways, this is what mine look like. They look like this. There's a name, a public key, and then an IP address. And then if you want the allowed IPs um, and on demand and some of those things are, are other options. So I will have to work with uh, Whiskers to get a good... Yeah, you did. That's okay. I don't think anybody couldn't guess it. But it doesn't matter. You can't do much with it. Go for it. Um, anyways, this, uh, this is, um, I, I need whiskers help to make sure that I explain it right and what needs to go in there. Maybe Frank, Frank will probably be able to do it too, but anyways, it's really pretty simple. Um, and once it's set up, it's super light, doesn't bog a bunch of things down. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm happy with it. Very happy with it. So WireGuard, WireGuard add-on. And it's now it's just running as part of my home assistant. Every time I start up home assistant, there it's going to be. Got nothing to do. Yeah, Nabucasa will still, yes. I shouldn't have even said you don't need Nabucasa because my, one of my, when Nabucasa was new, the only thing it did was grant you remote access to home assistant from wherever you were without a VPN or without opening a port in your router specifically for home assistant. So that was great. Uh, cause prior to that, I'd done both of those things. I had open ports and all I, and all I had was a generic crappy password for my home assistant. Some, there were a lot of people out there in the, in the universe uh, a couple of years ago that were running home assistant, opening a port so that they could access it remotely. And then they didn't even have a password on their, on their home assistant instance. So that was really bad. That was not a smart thing. That was not a smart thing, but it, you know, I'm not saying those people are dumb. I'm saying they didn't know how bad that could be. Right. I didn't know how bad that could be, but people can get in there and they can, they can access all kinds of stuff. Um, so uh, then I, I did VPN, I did WireGuard, but then once uh, we, we got remote access through uh, Nabucasa, I I didn't have a reason to need any of those things anymore. And then they added Amazon Echo integration and Google Home integration and web hooks. And I can't remember even what the latest stuff is that they've added, but it's awesome. Found your easier, easier than the add-on. Just run a script to add new clients. Yeah. So the, the, um, that would be nice to do. Maybe we could talk to Whiskers about doing that. Hi, baby. Yeah. 
It's a nice shirt. I love it. My daughter, my baby, she likes wearing my shirts. This one I haven't even worn. It smells good. Really? Yeah. Smells well, like you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you reach non-HA devices via WireGuard? Inside my house? Yes, Jawbreaker. I can I can access all of my home devices. So like right now, um, if I wanted to access like a WLED controller in my house, I can access this just as easily on my phone from work, just like that. I, I didn't do anything other than set up the wire guard the way we did it last night, me and Whiskers, so that it has the on-demand uh, control, meaning anytime I'm outside of my my own network in my house, it says, oh, I'm not connected to the Aiden Wi-Fi anymore. I'm going to open the VPN. It opens the VPN, connects to my house, uh, and now it's as if I were in the house. Just And so I can open these kinds of pages and stuff anywhere. I can open my um, my Blue Iris. So my Blue Iris thing. And that was something I had been... I had been uh, delaying. I don't remember what I did for the password for this thing yesterday. <laughs> I can't remember now. Shoot. Uh, I'm sure I wrote it down. I'll have to find it. But anyways, I can, I can access my remote uh, Blue Iris stuff just as easily without needing to open another port. And that's great because I, I hadn't done that. I was I was a little hesitant about opening a port for my blue iris cameras because they're cameras. And so you got an open port, you know, yeah, you got a password, but it's just a password. It's not like they're, they're uh, completely bulletproof. Um, but now with WireGuard, I mean, WireGuard's pretty about as bulletproof as something's going to be. And uh, with it, I can pull up this URL right here, 192.168.1.160, log in, blah, blah and see all my cameras from my phone or from my laptop or wherever I am. So quick question for the group. I'm about to order from Alibaba. I sell, I sell or lots of people have suggested no PayPal option. Any advice for safe ordering? Gosh, um, that's a good question. I certainly prefer PayPal when I can. I've paid extra to be able to use PayPal. I don't like the idea of a wire transfer to a bank to China uh, of, of any significant amount, Stone Wallace. And, I, and I'm and i pretty liberal about things. I, I'm pretty trusting. But if somebody says, oh yeah, just, just you know, send me a bank transfer for $3,000 and you're in China. And I don't even know if you actually have a factory that's actually building the things that you say you're building. So um, I don't know what other options are they giving you? Just bank transfer? That's what a lot of them use. They probably have some other kind of, doesn't Alibaba have its own sort of PayPal uh, system? World Pay? What about World Pay? That's, a, that's another item like that, right? They won't, most of them won't take credit card, man. I don't, maybe they will. Will they take a credit card? That's another. Uh, okay, good. Hundreds of orders, and I haven't had a problem. They pay credit card every time. Okay, cool. Well, you do pay extra for credit card then, too, right? So I install WireGuard and Hasio. What do you need to do in your phone for WireGuard? So Edgar, there's a uh, there's a phone app. Uh, there's a WireGuard app for Android or uh, iPhone. So you install that. Um, if you don't, I, I'm bad. I can't tell you right now. I can't. I don't think I could articulate clearly the process until I've, until I've broken it down myself and thought about how best to explain it. Um, and probably done it a couple more times to make sure I'm not missing something. And I don't want to just open it up and say, Oh, you do it like this and this and try and remind myself. Cause then that's how I reveal my secrets right? by passwords. <laughs> but, but, um, we can, we can work on putting something together, but you basically in your phone or on your laptop, you have a public, um, a public key and a private key, and they need to match between the two systems. Um, so you have on on your HasIO in the uh, configuration of the HasIO add-on, you add the peer name, the IP address you're going to use, that sort of VPN IP address, so 10.10.10.4, whatever. And then you have your key there. And then on the app in the phone, 
you have to tell it, you know, where you're connecting, basically your DNS address, your URL for your DNS. Um, I don't remember what else, but you definitely have to put in the key part there that it gives you. It gives you the key in WireGuard. That's, that's right. In the, in the WireGuard add-on, in the logs, it will give you a key. And that key is what you need to put in the phone. So it's, it helps if you pull up Hassio on your phone, because then you can just copy it and paste it in to your, uh, to your uh, WireGuard app on the phone. I'm going to get, I'll get, get Whiskers to do this with me again and we'll, I'll record it privately for us, or maybe we'll set it up as a, uh, we'll, we'll do it on a, uh, on a way that I can record it so that I can break it down and, and put it back out there. Uh, Proxmox. No, I asked him, I'll say this. How's it going by the way? Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. feels like I haven't seen you in a while. Maybe you've been around anyways. Um, yeah, I asked him first about Proxmox and he said, he said, um, I don't know something, something. Why don't you just use the add on? And I was like, oh, I tried the add on, but I couldn't get it to work. And then he's like, oh, it's easy. Watch. And we did it. It was easy. So I must do a video. You're right, Zolt. You are very right. I I'll talk. I will. I'll message whiskers. I, he's probably, well, he's probably awake now. Poor dude. He was up all night using has on Proxmox WireGuard add on works great. Oh yes. I'm sorry. Yes. If you're using, yes, I'm sorry. I'll say this. Maybe that's what you were asking. Yes, I am using Hassio on Proxmox and the WireGuard add-on works beautifully. So somebody tried to help me do it once. I can't remember who it was. And we tried it with the add-on and we assumed that the reason it wasn't working had something to do with my um, Proxmox, but it wasn't. The problem was we hit, we were trying to use my, um, we were trying to use my uh, Nabucasa URL. And that wasn't very smart. You don't need that. Video on WireGuard. Yep. And then there's that old one. That old one, I mean, that one still works. That was how you install it on a Raspberry Pi, right, Piston? And that one still works. If you just want to do it on the Raspberry Pi, that's great. And it works pretty well. What was wrong with my 3D printer? Um, When, exactly? Because it's been, it's it, it, from time to time. <laughs> Right now, it's uh, it seems to be working good. I, oh, oh, uh, so I, the problems that I've had with my 3D printer recently have been um, that's Baby Yoda printing. Have been um, when I'm printing with uh, ABS, which is what this is printing in. Uh, the corners, the edges peel up. So to try and prevent that, I put a brim. You know, I added the brim. So hopefully that, I mean, that, that's part of it. I think the part, I think the problem is the bed cools in certain spots at different rates. So some parts of the bed stay hot and some parts of the bed cool and the parts of the bed that cool start to peel. The, the part kind of warps, peels up. So bigger parts have a problem with warping. Uh, if they have a lot of surface area in contact with the bed, they warp. This baby Yoda should be fine. But the last time I tried to do a big piece, it warped. Uh, and then the, that's with ABS and then with PLA, I still don't know what the problem has been, but it, it's been chewing up the, the PLA. It's like, it gets stuck and it, and it pushes too hard and it just chews through the PLA and then doesn't go. So it might be that it needs to be hotter. I don't know what the ambient temp of my enclosure. That's a good question. Stone Wallace. Um, that whole closet is the enclosure. <laughs> so that closet, and it's probably, it's probably 85 degrees in there, 80 degrees in there. ABS and PLA most of the time, Ray. Yeah. Most of the time I'm ABS or PLA. That's it. I would prefer to, to print almost always in, in PLA. Um, ABS has its, has its qualities and stuff, but, um, ABS recommended to make an enclosure for the printer that keeps the temperature. Yeah, you're right, Edgar. I've read that. You're right. I should do that. Put it on my list, <laughs> put it on my list of things to do. Um, Need to try pet G. So good. Um, is that the stuff that's like translucent that you can get that's translucent maybe? I kind of feel like I did that. Squirrel. Huh? Squirrel. <laughs> what Edgar said. <laughs> you should uh, be a Xiaomi sensor for temperature and humidity. I, I, I have so many sensors. I should, I, there's no good reason 
there is zero good reason why I don't have a temperature sensor in there. I will put that on my short list of things to do. Hey, what did you guys think about the pocket meter? Did you guys watch that video? I, I sometimes just toss out a video because it's easy, but I really did like this little, this little guy. The guys at CES, they gave it to me. They, they, um, they were pretty nice about it. So they didn't ask for a video, uh, or anything. I just, but I think this thing is pretty sweet. It's a pretty nice way to, pretty nice way to get some decent function out of a, out of a dinky little meter. Yeah. Two amps is pretty low. That's why they did their, their pro, um, yeah, expensive. Yeah, if you're comparing it with a with a regular oscilloscope, it's pretty cheap. But yeah, that price is high. <clears throat> but I, I mean, the convenience of it is is stellar, right? I mean, just to be able to pull it out, open the app on my phone, and start testing things, I like that. And then it saves it for you. And there's some good things about it. Pocket meter is awesome. I would like to see someone that handles more voltage. Yeah. So if you look at there, and I didn't talk too much about it in the video. It was more of a let me just get this video done. Um, but the pocket pro and right now they think they're still on, um, still on Kickstarter unless they just ended. Last updated January 12th. Uh, where, how can I tell when it's over? Anyways, the pocket pro. So the pocket pro basically answers all the things that everybody said was wrong with the initial pocket. So it goes up to 10 amps. It goes up to like 600 volts. Um, and it's still pretty small, but it's obviously quite a bit bigger, right? This little thing was just a keychain. That was super cool. But I, I'm not going to, if if I'm messing around with something that's 600 volts, I'm not going to use my keychain. <laughs> okay. Uh, hmm. Uh, did you saw my message? What, why you didn't? Yeah, I did. Edgar. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't know anything about doing that. Way too much. Decent meters locally are 20 to $30 cheapest fully featured. Uh, but this is the oscilloscope part. Will, I think that's what, I think that's, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if you can find an oscilloscope that's 20 or $30, that's a different story, but it, yeah, if you're just doing voltmeter continuity, yeah, 20 bucks, no problem. But uh, if you want to do the oscilloscope, the oscilloscope part. If you just want to buy tools, man, do I have to have a reason? I don't need a reason. All I have to do is want it, right? It's a tool. It's useful. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I almost bought one of these, but I haven't yet. I don't know if I will. It might. It, this would be good for, you know, the 120 volt stuff. But for that, I don't know. That's a, that is pricey for that. Uh, I guess they're from Australia. Is that why things are showing up in AU dollars, ninety five US dollars? Not cheap, not cheap. But if you like it, if you like it, you want it. Boom, 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 boom. Forgot about that part. I think you are absolutely correct. Oh, good. I just can't ignore that. I just bought a three hundred dollar. Oh, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Have a good night, Edgar. Tools for me are like shoes for girls. Amen, Ray. Amen. So, you know, I feel bad for anybody who doesn't live near a Harbor Freight Tools. And I feel for like all you international guys, do you know what Harbor Freight Tools are? So most of it is junk, right? And it won't last a very long time. Some of it is very, some of it's plenty good enough and it'll last plenty long, but uh, it's cheap and it's so fun. I hate God, my wife, my wife, uh, every time we see a Harbor Freight tools, I'm like, Ooh, Harbor Freight, Har Ooh, Harbor Freight. Let's, I, I think I should go to Harbor Freight. <laughs> it was awesome. And then Jenny, well, you are unique. You are a unique blend there, Jenny tools and shoes. <laughs> Chineseum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hear about it all the time. We have a princess auto that is similar. The surplus section. Nice. Princess auto. <laughs> That's what they call it. Uh, and she knows, uh, she has to go with me. Otherwise I get lost. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I love it. Does WireGuard require a port opened in your router? Yes, Paul, it does. It does require a port opened in your router. It does. But the only, so there's a, there's a, a couple of good things about that is, uh, one, it's not an, the way WireGuard 
uh, handles that port is you know, on the receiving end is it, it doesn't send out a signal that says, Hey, I've got an open port here. Does anybody want to connect? Right. And that's, that's my way of understanding it. I'm sure somebody who's a real network, um, security guru can, would put it in more official terms, but basically for a lot of VPNs, uh, or other systems that you've opened a port for that port. when somebody like scans the network, it will be obvious which ports are open and then they can start focusing an attack on that port, trying a bunch of passwords, trying a bunch of whatever's to, to get into that port, especially if it's something like, you know, I don't know, whatever common VPN port is or whatever. Okay. With, with WireGuard, there's no advertising of that port being open. So if somebody scans your network to see if you have open ports to them, it will look like you don't, even though you do. But the only, and then the only way to get into that port, it's not just like a simple password thing. It's, it's a handshake, you know, with keys on both ends that have to match like a VPN. So very good, very, very secure. Blah, blah, service reporting tips, listening with language needed to talk. <laughs> oh, Princess Auto. Oh, okay. I can't, I got to look at this. And this is, this, is this in, uh, the UK? Where's, where's Princess Auto? Yeah, that's about right. Stubby. Gloves, lights, whatever kinds of junk they can find. HVAC tools. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Measuring tool. Oh, yeah. Measuring tools. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be sponsored by Harbor Freight. I totally do. I was watching a guy, uh, there's some YouTube, uh, there's probably several of them, but there's some YouTube guys that will, um, they buy like the cheapest, whatever, like they go to Harbor Freight and they buy like the cheapest air grinder they can find or something. And then they'll just work it and see how good it is. And a lot of times you find out that it's not that bad. Sometimes you find out that thing is a total piece of garbage. <laughs> But hey, you know, it works. But this is like, for me, I've got my crane that I use for stuff is from Harbor Freight. Um, what else? My welder is from Harbor Freight. Um, we got a lot. And then and the nice, the best thing at Harbor Freight, the things that you can for sure count on is their hand tools. Because they'll they guarantee their hand tools um, for life. So if they did break, like something like a wrench or socket or whatever, even if they did break, you just go get a new one. I got my welding helmet from Harbor Freight. In fact, that's exactly the welding helmet that I have, except I paid that price, darn it. But self-darkening or automatic darkening. I love Harbor Freight. I could go spend so much money there. And I'd come home and I'd and then I'd be like, ah oh, no, I'm too tired to do anything. <laughs> the rolling MX cart. Is that where you lay down the on your back? I got one of those too. I don't know if I got it there. I think I got mine on Amazon though. So they just, they, we've had a Harbor Freight about, I don't know how far, 20 miles. It's not close, right? We had a Harbor Freight, but it wasn't very close. And then now they just built a, they built one really close to us a few months ago, finished it maybe six months ago. And so, and it's right by places where we like to go and eat and where Mrs. Z's does her shopping like Costco and Walmart. And all, it's all right there. Yeah. Love me some Harbor Freight. Look at the wooden dolly, $7. Canada. We get hosed. Yeah, you do. You know, when I was looking at your, I was looking at the princess, that's why I wanted to go there. Cause I was looking at your princess auto page and I thought, Oh, that's not really that. That's not as cheap as it could be. <laughs> All right. Get to bed. Get to bed, Jerry. Have a good night, buddy. Take care. Yeah. The creepers. Yeah. The lay down creeper. Yeah. Where did I, where did I just put that window and I closed it? Here it is. I've got one of these. These, to these stools, I totally have one of those stools. We actually have got a couple of these <laughs> for two bucks. It's a little LED light. You just flip it on and off. And when it dies, you throw it away. Um, I've got moving blankets from there. I need to get Harbor Freight. I need, I need them to sponsor me. Come on, guys. Uh, those would probably be decent. Those drills. I need a drill press someday. I need everything. I need everything. My, my truck battery's dead. Oh, let's talk about some other stuff too, though. Um, cause the other thing I wanted to talk about, Ooh, hydraulic gear puller. That's a good idea. Let's 
submersible utility pump. Like I, I see these things and I think I could use that. I, I find a reason to use that. <laughs> a breaker bar. Those sockets, those, those sockets seem expensive. That must be because they're deep and super, super strong, something, something. But yeah, I got some color coded sockets. I got some new wrenches. I love that place. Squirrel. <laughs> Y'all want a drill press. Huh? Every, everybody wants a drill press. Let's all, drill press is all the way around next Christmas. <laughs> Brins is on. Let's watch it. Let's see it again. Oh, yeah. Look at that. You are getting hosed. But is that Canadian dollars? I mean, I don't know how it translates. What's the, is there an exchange rate or I don't know. Oh, those are impact rated sockets. Okay. That's why. Wish we had Harbor Freight in the UK. I wish you did too, Ray. I feel for you, man. Oh, you got a drill press from somebody throwing one out? I should probably. Harbor Freight and Costco. <laughs> Tools to build more storage. <laughs> yeah, you are getting hosed. Sorry, man. Um, what was the other thing I was going to do? Oh, I wanted to show you the, I wanted to talk about Blue Iris a little bit. Since I put that in the title. Oh, good. It did just log in. Okay, great. Um, oh, here's my new real link little camera down here too. So here's my blue iris remote access. And one, two, three, four, five. This one. I don't know why it's saying no signal. Sometimes that this is the um that's the the wise cam, so it sometimes needs a little reboot, a little kick in the pants, unfortunately. And then, um, but anyways, uh, I got it down to fifty percent. This is fifty percent uh, CPU, and I think baseline when I just when I didn't have any cameras in it at all, it was using about fifteen percent, and then adding this many cameras, and I'm going to add more cameras. I've got a lot more cameras actually that I want to add. Uh, this one, I've already got a name for it. When I get off the stream today, this one here is getting installed uh, in the kind of upside down in the hallway so that I can see this little area where the kids' bedrooms are and it can turn around and I can see down in the sort of main living room where our big the windows are and the fireplace and stuff. So I want to make sure that when we're gone, we can tune in and we can see what's going on in the house. But uh, the setup went pretty well. Who's using... Um, the blue iris uh the uk there's a great whiskey section <laughs> huh? who's using the mqtt stuff in blue iris i haven't done that what's my hardware for my blue iris box that's a great question chris i i don't know if my hardware is great uh what i got was uh we're gonna i'll show you on singles day on 11 11 1 what is that right is that what it is 11 11 1 on singles day i is when i got mine i can sign in and don't even have to reveal any secrets but i can look at my orders it's back here somewhere i went a little crazy on singles day on aliexpress oh is it 1111 okay it is no It's in here somewhere. It's it's an i7 single board computer thing. Uh-oh, where is it? Are these all from the same time? No, those are from September. Huh. Let's see. Search my orders. Um... There it is. This is it. So this is what I got to run Blue Iris. Um, it's a, it's an i7. Uh, the one I got is this one here. No, this one. I got this one with uh, that one. Nope. Well, yeah, I think that is, I think that's the configuration that I have. But at, on singles day, it was only like 300. Actually, we could have seen, right, my orders. We could see how much I paid. Yeah, I paid 306. It's the 75, well, 
this is giving you the whole option thing here. But anyways, this is what I got. And, and at first it wasn't, it was running real slow and I was kind of bummed. I thought it was bad, but it was my settings in Blue Iris. I didn't have, I hadn't gone through the process of maximizing Blue Iris to uh, do a better job. So Stone Wallace, I have alerts from my cameras via MQTT from Blue Iris to Home Assistant. That's what I want. That's exactly what I want. And, and even can I do the other way around too? So like when a door opens, it can send a signal to Blue Iris to say, move a camera or take a picture or something like that. That's what I want. That's what I, that's what I want. Uh, do I have a link for this? That's a nice little unit. Refer people to buy an old Dell Optiplex. Uh, third or fourth generation i7 and most are good for up to 16 cameras. Yeah. I'm hoping to be able to get into that somewhere in the teens range of cameras for this. And I think based on how many I have and the CPU usage that I'm at, I think I should be able to do that for 200 bucks. Yeah. There's plenty of good options. This, you know, I was just, it was singles day and I was tired of shopping. So I just said, ah, I'm just gonna buy that one. Blink. <laughs> Happy Sunday, Steven Metzger. How are you, my friend? Didn't we all? Oh, what did I, what did I miss? What is Quindor answering? Didn't we all? Oh, you mean spend too much money on singles day? <laughs> I had a good time. It was fun. It's a great excuse for shopping. I think that's possible, but I haven't done it all the way. Blue Iris has commands that you can do via HTTP call. Okay. I haven't really played with the settings. Um, and I don't know here if it's going to let me. Yeah. So through this, for those of you that use Blue Iris, help me, help me learn, please. And thank you. Um, in this interface, I can't do everything, right? Not like I can when I'm on the computer that's running Blue Iris. So like I, I don't even think I can add a camera here, can I? What does that do? No, that's going to save a picture. Uh, UI device list, full camera list, disk usage. Yeah. Streaming profiles. User interface settings. So I don't think I can like add a new camera and stuff. How did I remote in? Uh, when you're in, actually, I can bring up my... I can do that. I don't even need a reason. <laughs> um, so my blue iris, my blue iris is running on a, on that little box. It's sitting right here and I have a keyboard and a mouse connected to it for now because I was setting it up directly. But then in the, uh, in the actual blue iris, uh, connection part, you can, you can turn it on for remote access. Let me, let me get there. The way to do that though, I have to use this uh this monitor over here that you're looking at well actually no that's not true i'm gonna open up a capture card bi is blue iris yes yes will yes it is okay so now this is my blue iris uh, computer here and if i move my mouse away here actually what i'll do is i'll shut this down a little bit and do that so this is in a this is actually an elgato capture card and what I've done is I've connected my, the output from the Blue Iris PC to this capture card. And then I'm just looking at it on this monitor along with everything else. <laughs> How many frames per second are your camera set up for? So for viewing in the live view, Chris, they're only set up for one frame per second. But for recording, they're set up for whatever the normal is for, their, for, the, for those specific cameras. I think they're all around 20. 15 or 20. Um, but, but in the live view, it's there. Only, it's only one frame per second. So it's really choppy in the live view, but when it records, if it's triggered to record because of motion or something, then it records at 20 frames per second, full resolution. Um, so if you go in here first, I have to actually start blue Iris. I don't know why it always wants to do that, but it's okay. Why not just RDP to your windows? Um, remote desktop. I could do that. This is really, this, there's no lag when I've remote desktop with like Chrome. Um, there's a little bit of a lag. This is like lagless. So this, this was convenient for me. 
you're certainly right. That's a that's a perfectly good option. Um, all right, up here, settings. Let's see, can you see that? Yes, you can. It's really small, but you can see it. Uh, you could do remote access wizard. I didn't. Uh, I think that will set it up from outside. You know, like we were talking about with if you wanted to do it directly with a port open and stuff. I went into settings info and then web server, and then in here, uh, it just you set up the I, the address and this basically just tells you where you're going to go to get to your um to get to your your instance your your uh web server for this thing i don't remember if i have if i had to turn that on here it is this is what you need to click this enable enable the http web server on port and then whatever you want okay and then for all of you who didn't catch my duck dns address there is my public ip address of my but that's okay. There's no open port there, so you can just have at it if you want. VNC is built into Max. VNC. I know what that is. I can't remember why. But I, I don't want just like a command line, if that's what you're saying. I might, and might, that might not be. You might be answering somebody else's question completely. But then, so in here, I need to now do something like... Uh, where is the, where do you set up MQTT and stuff in here? Is it, it's not on a per camera basis, is it? Digital and IOT, maybe it's in here. Oh, MQTT. <laughs> Enable. Yes, 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 yes. Oops, oh, oh, whoops. I just clicked on the wrong keyboard. Whoops, whoops, whoops. I don't know what just happened. I just totally sent my thing chrome going crazy. Oh, it's because I switched scenes down here. Okay, that's the problem with having two keyboards. So this will be my, my MQTT broker. Ah. Seventy one, eight one two three, log in. And then it looks like the password will show up if I show you. So I'm gonna move it over here. Sorry, I know. What fun is that? Make sure the password's not showing up anywhere else. <laughs> Okay, good. It didn't show it anyways. Okay. Sweet. Uh, so now I set up the MQTT broker stuff. But what else can it do? I guess now I need to figure out what it can do. Sure, you go into your individual camera settings and enable alerts via MQTT for that camera. Okay, cool. So let's pick uh, like in camera settings, I assume. And where is it at here? Let's just see webcast, flash live, Windows media enable, schedule, no PTZ control, watchdog, post, alerts. There you go. Uh, send a web request or MQTT. <laughs> MQTT topic. Look at that. There it is. Uh, we can say um, this is going to be. Oh, I did it again with the wrong keyboard. <laughs> we're going to say all of them are going to be BI slash, and then we're going to call this one hallway. Uh, and then, and then down here, what we want this to be, um, hallway motion. We're going to do this. We're going to do hallway motion. No, let's do motion. Let's do this way. Blue iris motion and then hallway. Okay. And then 
It'll just be detected. Right? So when there's an alert, it just says motion detected. Something like that. How does that look? Yeah, it's like watching your parents use the computer. Hey, now! Me? <laughs> <laughs> He's the cause. Who? What are you guys talking about? Many of my projects have caused lots of trouble. I don't care. That's probably true. Watching you try and figure things out triggers you sometimes uh, in a bad way, Ray. Like you're like, oh, come on, Doc. Do it like the Doc. Story at eleven. <laughs> oh man. I have home, home, uh, home assistant alerts for all my door, window, and fridge door sensors. Lost so many demands. <laughs> every time, every time somebody opens the door, no, no, no. So then, oh, so on alert, what's it going to do? It's going to send that thing. Okay, that's cool. So it's going to take a little bit of time for me to to get in there. My soda, grr, guests are not safe. <laughs> oh, good times. Um, so I'm going to go through and do that for several things and, you know, put it on schedules and, and all that stuff is super time consuming. And unfortunately, what happens to me is I, I like, oh, I figured it out. Okay, great. And then I just move on. I don't always finish it. But talk to my monitor. You passed it right there. Oh, I see. <laughs> right there can you see it yeah mm. what's the best motion sensor solution for use with home assistant dion Rowney says what do you guys think i will give my my uh two cents i don't know that there's a best dion i think you've got great options in a lot of different ways i would say zigbee definitely zigbee is good hey keaton's here How's it going? For those of you that use Amazon Echo, Keaton is the man that brought us the the uh, She Who Shall Not Be Named media player. Good to see you, Keaton. Thanks for being here, man. I still use it all the time. Still use it. And it has gotten a lot better about not breaking. So good work. Good work to you and anybody else that's been helping you. Um, for a long time, it was like every time there was an update, either with Hassio or with the add-on, you know, I have to kind of reset some things and stuff, but it's been pretty solid now for a few months, even going through updates. So nice work, my friend. Thanks again. Um, yeah, you've given us something that I don't think the Google guys have. People who use a lot of Google Home don't have that media player ability uh, to the extent that you've made it possible with Amazon Echo. So thank you. Um the other things that I use for motion sensors, I do use a 433 megahertz motion sensors, a couple of them. They're super cheap, but they're not much cheaper than the Zigbee and they certainly are not as fast. So they're good. They're decent options. If you already have a bridge, if you already have the 433 megahertz bridge, using using one of those Sonoff battery powered R, uh, R, uh, 433 megahertz RF uh, motion detectors is fine. They're big and bulky, so they're not very good looking. Um, so the only places that I've used them the two places that I have those, one is in the garage and I need to actually put another motion sensor in the garage because that one works well, but it doesn't capture the whole garage, obviously. And so sometimes I'm working in the garage and the lights go out, but I use it in the garage because I don't care what it looks like. And we use it in the boy's bathroom. That's the one where when I, when we go in the bathroom, it, it turns on the lights and if they don't, if they're in the shower for too long, it turns them off. <laughs> but, uh, so I think of those two, Zigbee would win. Zigbee is more expensive, but it would win. You need, you still need a, a, a hub, a gateway to go from Zigbee to um, Home Assistant. Um, but then the other thing is the AM312s. AM312s. I'm going to shut this. I'm going to turn shut this for now. So the AM312s. Uh, those are, oops, too many mice. Too many mice and too many keyboards. These will work with a uh, pretty much any um, ESP32 device. So you can connect this to a Sonoff. You can connect it to a, I don't know if you can connect it to a Shelly. You can certainly connect it to a BH on Ofri. <laughs> I was chatting with the BH today. Um, 
So you can use these uh, for D1 minis. You can use them on Node MCUs. Um, you know any ESP eighty any ESP eighty two sixty six board, and probably a thirty two ESP thirty two would work just as well. But these work great, and I I've been putting these on my light switches. So my BH on free light switches or my Sonoff light switches. I'm including these, and they work pretty well. Don't like battery sensors. I use the Bra wireless sensor. Two Sonoff RF bridges flash with Tasmoda, but the Y sensors. Oh, that's another one I hadn't even thought of. You're right. You got the Y sensors. Forgive me. You know why I haven't thought of that? Because I haven't turned mine on yet. I have it, but I haven't actually gone through the plug it in and turn it on process. I hear everybody saying how great it is and how easy it is, and it's I just haven't done it. Twelve fifteen here in the UK. Got to go to bed. Work in the morning. Catch the rest of the stream later. See ya. Thanks, Piston. Have a good night, my friend. Current motion sensors are Node MCUs with ESP Home and have those PIR sensors is talking about. They work perfectly. I hear you, Thanos. So the answer to the question is, uh, it depends. Worst answer to the question ever, <laughs> but it depends. Um, do you need it to be battery powered? So can't is it somewhere where you can get power? If it's not, or if you want to put it in some place where it can, where where it's not going to be able to be powered, then you're going to want to do Zigbee or I guess Wise, right? The Wise ones, are, I'm sure, are battery powered as well. I think uh, anyone using Wise after the data breach, I, you know, I'm not using the Wise stuff very much at all, really at all. But I would, I would still. Um, you know me, I'm not, I'm not gonna probably shy away too much from it. They'll, they'll figure it out. Um. And that's what I have marked the wise starter kit. I have that, that kit that does the, um, I have these PIR sensors. Actually, if you guys haven't been there recently, if you go to drz.com, which I'm still trying to get my dang, I, I bought a, uh, certificate, uh, HTTPS, you know, secured thing. I just don't know how to get it working on the website. It's just my own dumbiness. But if you go to this product link page, I I put my spreadsheet when I make a video and I do product links that I put in the description, I finally just collecting them all here. So in here, there's going to be everything that you could possibly ever need. And that's my quick route to retirement. <laughs> if you want me to make more videos, click on, click on something from this Amazon link before you buy anything. <laughs> and then, and then I I will thank you much, and I will keep on making videos and long after I'm done doing anesthesia. Um, but those particular sensors are, if you search here for PIR, I think I have it right here at AM AM three twelve, and you can get them from Amazon. There's a link. You can get them from AliExpress. There's a link. Uh, I think this one is from Banggood. So, yep, Amazon, AliExpress, Banggood. I, I, I swear I'm getting ignored. No, Jeff, we will not ignore you. You will not be ignored any longer. What did you say? Then have the motion sensor trigger blue iris via MQTT so you can turn off blue iris motion detection and free up CPU. Oh, well, that's not a bad idea. I like that very much. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. I love that idea because that's, what's, that's what takes up a lot of the CPU, right, is it's constantly analyzing these images and saying, is there motion? Did it change from the last image? Did it change from the last image? Did it change from the last image? And if, and that's why a lot of cameras, a lot of these cameras in order to keep them small and, and uh, especially the battery powered ones and such, they use those kinds of uh, infrared um, motion detectors to trigger the camera. The camera is not constantly comparing images like blue iris would be doing. Um, so yeah, that's a great way to do it. And if you get a motion detector that sends a signal to Blue Iris to say start recording on that camera, bingo, perfecta mundo, yo. <laughs> there you go. You've said that like five times. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> Whiskers will be on momentarily. Oh, sweet, sweet. Three, two. Where's Whiskers? Where is he? Where is he? Yes, have I seen the, D yes, the Sonoff D1? I have. So 
would you guys like to see, tell me if you'd like to see, would you like to see a Sonoff D1 versus Shelly Dimmer comparison? Because I have them both. No whiskers. <laughs> hey, but DIY Digiblur, how's it going, my friend? What's up, Travis? I've, I've loved your, I don't know, if, I don't know how long you've been saying it, but your get your shiz off the cloud. <laughs> get your beep off the cloud. I love that. I think that that has been, that is way better than if it'll work or it'll explode. That's your, that's your tag, buddy. I love it. Get your shiz off the cloud. I love it. Are you ready? What do you think about going to China? So Travis, we, we were talking about China earlier and, and you know, what, what, uh, we, cause you and I haven't talked about it. We haven't shared our feelings about the, uh, the, um, coronavirus or whatever, but, uh, for, for what it's worth, what I said earlier to everybody was, I'm just going to follow whatever the CDC and the Chinese infection control people say. If they say, don't go, we don't go. If they say it's okay, we go. So that's how I'm looking at it. You, you'll miss me. Where are you going? Where are you going, Jeff? <laughs> just like Lyme disease, you'll be fine. <laughs> Is that what you mean? <laughs> when am I going to China? In three weeks. We're three weeks. Yeah. Can you imagine that they're sanitizing the streets for a thousand infected? I know, Vanessa, there's, you know, there's an interesting, it's an interesting thing that, uh, if you step back and look at some of those, some of the sort of epidemiological aspects of it, like what, what's really happening and how does it compare to other things that happen? And it would be very easy in that situation to say, it's not a big deal, but they have had big deals in the past. And, uh, all it takes is once and, and, and media starts talking about it. And now like every time somebody comes from China and has a cold and somebody identifies it as a new virus, it's not like coronavirus is new. It's, I mean, we get new, we get new strands of the flu every year or, and more people will get the flu and die of the flu than get this and have died of this. I mean, maybe the rate is high. Okay. And the people who have been gotten really sick and died have been the same people that you would expect to get sick and die from the flu. They're old. They're immune compromised or some, somehow otherwise unhealthy. Um, with the exception, I guess, of a couple. I don't know. There was a doctor that died. Two of them. One of them died and, and, uh, from getting infected. And then the other one, like, had a, he got, the, he got this, this uh, virus and then he had a heart attack and died. So, Quindor, thanks for being here, my friend. Always good to have you. I'm going to be building some Quindor boards now that I got all my parts in. So, take, it, take care. Good night. Too bad isn't a virus that makes you drink Corona. <laughs> Oh, Dr. Z, he's chatting with me in Discord. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, I'm sorry. Glad to hear everything worked as expected. Thank you for the report. I'm watching the stream. All right. Hey, Whiskers, thanks for being here. We need to um, get together again, and uh, I need to take notes, or maybe I'll start trying to remember how we put it together, because we need a video about this. We do. We need a video. People need to see how to get it done, and I don't want to do it and reveal all my keys. <laughs> So I could, I, I started to kind of show some things uh, today on the stream. Um, and I wanted to bring it up because it's very exciting and I'm very happy about it. I'm very happy the way it worked, but I want to not have to redo it when I reveal my public private keys or whatever. <laughs> so, oh, there's Jeff. Jeff is also pinging me through blue or through discord. For some reason, it's not making noise today. I don't know why. Not only did you say it five times, but you said it five times and through Discord. <laughs> Philippines right now, because there are a lot of Chinese coming back from China from their New Year's vacation. Yeah. So spin up a dev instance. That's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. Seems like an appropriate time to head off to bed. One hour and 23. Are you going to bed, Thanos? Good night, my friend. Sleep tight. Thanks for being here. WireGuard plus two, you convert Proxmox LXC enhancements, a night featuring whiskers. We, we should totally do that. If, you, if, you, if you're game whiskers, we can do that. Not tonight, but another night. That was old. Sorry. The last one, I forgot to hit enter on my bat. No problem, dude. <laughs> Thank you for your help, Jeff. Thanks for pointing that out. That's a great idea. I appreciate it. I love good ideas. I don't always see them the first time they pop up, but I love them. Air the transmission has completely different to the flu. 
And that's why it's such a concern. The transmission is completely different. Is that true? I thought it was just airborne. Is it not? I don't know. I do not know. But I do know that if uh, the CDC says don't go, we don't go. It's easy. We can let the experts decide. If the, if the experts say the risk is low and it's safe, then we go. If the experts say, eh, it's moderate risk, it's probably best if you don't go, we don't go. Piece of cake. I like to keep it simple. Thanks for the Wemos uh, humidity and temp sensor post you did. Currently on the same project. Oh, you're welcome. Me? Old sap or was that somebody else? You are welcome. That was a long time ago. Just watching things daily. That's right. It's amazing that like a week ago, I mean, there was maybe a little bit of talk. But I hadn't even considered it being an issue. Um, then, of course, the first people to start worrying, this is probably the same for most of you fellas, is your mom. Uh, for me, sisters. My wife's pretty, she's pretty good about it. She's a nurse. So she's, she, you know, when we talked about it, she had the same attitude as me. Well, that's what we have the CDC for. They get, they issue a travel advisory. No big deal. Yeah, the post from a long time ago. Oh, nice. They are usually slow. That's true. That's true. That's true. They're, they're slow to issue. And, and, and maybe that's because they don't want to scare. Um, they don't want to scare folks. But if that's, if they don't have something out by the time it's time to go, we'll look at whatever China and their travel advisory warnings are. Because, the, you know, they've already said don't go to Wuhan. They're keeping people there. That, um, that are there now and stuff. So um, we don't have to travel through Wuhan. The closest we'll get is the airport in Beijing. We'll have to arrive in Beijing, go through customs, and then get on a plane down to Shenzhen. Um, so as long as there's nothing there. Hey, all right, James. Thank you for subscribing. We haven't done this one in a little while, so let's do it now. Woo! All right. Have we been at this an hour and a half? I'm feeling like I want to go start working around the house. What do you guys think? Let's help somebody else and then let's get, um, let's get to signing off. What do you say? I hate to end it, but I want to get some, I want to get this camera hung up and get to cranking out some stuff. I got to figure out how I'm going to stream from the garage. And the, and the big question, how I'm going to stream, stream from the garage is just audio. I was hoping to be able to use this. This was the microphone that I used when I was in the, uh, at CES and it was really good. Hey, look at there. Rob showed up. I was just about to start winding down. Now we had to rev back up again. How's it going, man? I was, uh, so we did uh, Blue Iris, played around with Blue Iris, just not really very much, but a little bit. Just uh, set up my MQTT broker and set up one thing to send an alert, just enough to figure out where the settings are. So that now I can go in there and start setting it up. Um, UK advising against all but essential travel to affected area of China. Yeah. Key word there is affected area. Right, Pinky Wafer? Affected area. If it's if that's just Wuhan, then we're good. If that's Beijing and everything else, then we're not so good. Let's see if this is going to work today. It didn't work last time. Create a new. Um, we'll see if it works today. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Okay, try enter now. See if it works. Less severe than the flu. Not sure what all the freak out is about. Yeah, those are sort of the two. Those are the two. Uh, two opinions, pretty much, right? Rob, it's either. Oh my gosh, here we go again. Another, you know bird flu and blah, 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 and it's going to be awful or eh. So I don't think it's working. Dang it. It only takes one person to get sick. And then it's the zombie apocalypse. Dang it. And that's going to be me. Do I know anything about fix the broad link poke keeps connecting from the HA router? I don't old sap. I'm sorry. I don't use mine really. I, you know, I set it up and it's, it, mine is still connected to my network. I see it in my network all the time. Yeah, no names are showing up. I honestly didn't play with it. I was hope, I was hoping that somehow it would have, it would have fixed itself, but it doesn't look like it did. I think, you know what, let's go through here and see if maybe what we need to do is reconnect it. I probably need to do something in the YouTube chat to give it permission. 
right? This. That's why. Upgrade to Pro membership enabled connections. What? Oh, that's Mixer. Okay, that was it. Is that it? Let's go back now. That's dumb. Why was that thing turned off? So this is Discord and ten dollars a month. Aren't you crazy? Try it now. Curses, curses. Careful what I show. Did I show something bad? Yeah, I will be careful. Thank you. Doesn't look like it's working there now either. Dang it. Dang it, dang it. Well, I didn't uh, keep my end of the deal there and, and work on that while but in the in the week since we tried it. Let me go back here. While you guys are looking at that to see if anything's popping up, I will mess with the settings in a different window. That should be it, right? It should be in that connection somewhere. The other thing we could do, we had, we, it was fun last time when we did a little bit of um, just like Z's trivia. That was kind of fun. It's still saying this. You must upgrade pro. Bautisi must be a moderator in your channel for these features to work. Here we go. That's Twitch. YouTube, if you want. Paste this URL into the moderator section. Okay, I'm going to try this, but then we'll just, if it doesn't work, we'll just do trivia again, because that was fun. But if we're going to do trivia, I got to start thinking of a trivia question. Yeah, Bautissimo's in there. It's in there as a as a moderator, so it should be allowed to do it. I don't know, man. I don't know, guys and gals. That's a bummer. Squirrel! Error connecting to remote server. Yeehaw! I, was, uh, I still need to change that one, too. It'll work or explode. Ooh, that would be a good... We need a, we need a bot that does something when we say that. All right, let's think about this, then. What are we gonna do a trivia about today? Let's think about a trivia question for today. Uh, how about Should we make it about a, an old video? Should we make it about an old video? Last time we talked about the bug. Something about the bug. Sir Goodenough says something about the bug because I know all about the bug. Um, something about the bug. Um, let's see. This would be a hard one. There's a 1970. <laughs> There's a special connection with 1970. And my and this bug, you know the 1970 bug, and my family. Do you remember what that connection is? Anybody think of it? Terrible welding on the coupling. <laughs> Dang! Ah, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Would I have to use 16 channel PWM LED driver board? Woo! I designed one around the. PCA and just got a stack of boards from China. I suck at the software side. Would I have a use for it? I don't know what I would be able to do with it. Five twenty-five. It maybe somebody else would. Uh, on Discord, if you if you were willing to donate, if that's what you're looking to do, there's probably some. There you go. Somebody already got it. Ray Cruz. Were you the first one? Nope, nope. Not Ray Cruz. Wasn't the first one. Kelvin. 
Kelvin McMillan, you're right. You guys remember. That's awesome. Thank you. That didn't take very long. Oh, there's a good question. Okay, Rob's got it. Where is my where is my first Sonoff installed? Where's the first Sonoff installed? I have to think about technically which one is the one. Yeah, the, so the special thing about the my family is that my dad also had a brand new 1970 Volkswagen Bug that he bought off the showroom with mag wheels. It was white. In the wall, let's be a little more specific. Uh, I think Will won. Yep. Oh, hallway entry. Nope. Sir Goodenough won. It was the same one. Front hall light switch. So Will and Sir Goodenough, you both got it. You both got it. Yep. Near the front door. That's right. That's right. Philip, did you say father? That was what I meant. So whoever was first, we got to give to whoever was first. Whoever was first to say father and whoever was first to say that front door hallway. Who was it? Did you take a look at what I sent you in Discord? It might be a good video. Ooh, Jay After Dark, how's it going, man? Uh, when did you send it? Let's see. Oh, yes, I did look at that. I have not covered it. We can check it out real quick. Haskit. Oh, you know what? I looked at this and I, have you played with it? I tried it. Um, how much is this? Uh, are, are people trying it and getting good results? Because I tried it a little bit and I had a little trouble. But it does look very cool. It seems to. Haskis. <laughs> In a touch friendly. <laughs> It's good touch, bad touch. Uh, no, it does look super cool. It actually has a really nice uh, looking interface and it's supposed to be able to just grab all your stuff from Hasio and make it um, really easy to have a nice, very nice app without doing a ton of, of stuff. But um, if anybody wants to here, I'll share that. I have, I barely looked at it. Um, I did install it because the guy sent me something as well, but I haven't done much else. Just tested MQTT to turn on your new garage overhead lights via the B that we just set up. Did it work, Chris? It worked. I actually don't know, but I think it's the one in the kitchen by the mountain room. Uh, the, nope, but that is one of the first ones. So there were, so in the very first video, in the very first video I showed two, one was down by the front door and the other one was in the toy room. And um, I honestly, I, I, the one I show first on the video is the one in the front room. So I assume that that's the first one that I installed. I did them both kind of at the same time. But I did like on the same day here for me. So which one technically was first? But the front door one is the one that I've I've referred to as the first one for a while. Instead of running in the garage like me, just click the video and hit trigger. <laughs> oh, why that makes me laugh so much. It's like, oh, I got to see if this works. Instead of just triggering it in the video, you got to run downstairs and go in the garage. But I could see, I, you know, I see, I could see that. I still have, haven't burnt down the house yet. Yeah, that's, that's the one. It's, I say it every time. Super Chat should get stickers. Yes, Super, Super Chat should get stickers. I like that, Nick. Especially Nick. Nick, Nick, you want stickers, buddy? You got them. All right, so let's give those stickers out. Let's give those stickers out. Nick, you can have stickers. You betcha, Nick Greed. You can have stickers. Um, I guess that means that this probably won't work. If I do address or W for win, I don't think that's going to work either. That should give you a link to, um, sorry, Brett, but we're, the, the, the thing's not working. There you go. The Nightbot is giving it. So if you go to this mailing address for stickers, winners, Jeff wants stickers. Oh, no, this was the old one. Yeah, it's the W one. We'll just go back to the old way for now. Just email me your, or give me your address, message me your addresses or whatever, and I'll, and I'll get you some stickers. So I will defer your stickers. I think you might have been a, a, a winner. Jeff had a great idea and, and contributed significantly today. I wouldn't mind giving Jeff stickers too. That means, that makes, well, if Will gives up his, then that makes four. And I think the other one was, was it Sir Good Enough that won with the front door? Yep, hallway entry. So Sir Good Enough is our other winner. So we've got 
So winners, since the, the, not, the, the announcement of winners has been a bit discombobulated. Jeff Noreen, because he had a great idea about how to trigger and he sent me the, tried to tell me five times and I didn't pay attention. So Jeff gets to be a winner. Um, Nick gets to be a winner because he gave us super, super chat. So I'll, I'm all for that. Thank you, Nick. And then uh, Sir Good Enough, you have my address. I will refresh. Thank you. Yes, refresh me. Refresh me. And then I don't know what I'm going to do about that bot. I, I might go back to, maybe maybe I'll just have to come up with some more questions like this and we'll just do like a trivia question. We'll give one one out for a trivia question and one stickers for everyone. Oh, not again. That was really, <laughs> that took months to sort that out and get everybody their stickers. Oh, man. Alex needs some stickers. So we're going to do a, what, what, what I think we'll do going forward if this bot's, and, and even just for, maybe just for a change, just even if maybe the bot not working is fortuitous. Uh, let's do a trivia question and a helpful award. All right. Um, I would love the idea of like voting. Like we, you know, we, we say, let's, you know, what do you guys, who do you guys think deserves stickers today and vote for a vote for somebody that you guys deserve stickers and um, maybe a trivia question or something like that. Thanks for the stream. You're welcome. Will, thanks for being here. I got it for answering. Oh, Kelvin. Okay. Kelvin, you win. Great. Make sure I get your address. That forums. Yeah, that forum's not working. I have another one, but it's linked to this Bottissimo chat bot. Which isn't working. Commands right here. I don't, what is going on? I don't understand. Bot bot TCMO. Maybe that maybe there was a free, maybe I was working under a free thing for bot TCMO and it expired or something. Anyways, just just send me your addresses. We'll get the rest worked out. Second that, Home Assistant Improvement made this week votes. Ooh, okay. Been a kid. Oh, guys, hey, Ross, we're gonna do we're gonna do sign off pretty soon. We already did we already did the giveaway thing because the giveaway is not working. We're just checking on Yoda. Tools and shoes for the win. <laughs> Good night, Henry. Thanks for being here again. Kid in a candy store chasing my cats on the sewn off camera. <laughs> I need a life. <laughs> it's just the bottom that's done. All right. Ask Digiblur about Blue Iris MQTT. He's the man with that. Oh, okay. Travis, you got to teach me, brother. I know, I know, uh, um, Rob is also big, big, uh, Blue Iris guy. <laughs> First time I've seen a live stream of yours, 8 30 AM here in the Philippines. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here, old sap. It's I'm glad you're here, man. Home. Us three. Oh, that's right. Mom and the mom and the other kids went somewhere. Well, good. When we get off, we're going to hang this camera up in the hallway out there. And this is going to be the camera. Is that the film? Is that film? Film. It's video. It, it will video. Look. Oh, uh, I guess you can't see it right now. But anyways, it, it'll video some stuff inside like the house. Like the other one just says pictures. I do need more on VPN. Me and Whiskers are going to put it together. We'll, we'll put it together. You do do Frank. Frank loves MQTT. No, he doesn't. Frank doesn't even use MQTT, Will. You're pulling my, you're pulling my leg. <laughs> oh, I haven't done grip ties. See? Thank you, girly. Thank you. But see these things? These I got to change my bots. Time to ch time to try a new bot because this bot ain't working. Ain't working. Good point. Ain't point. I'm gonna have to try a different Who's that? Advertise. I don't know who this is. This is some lady, and this is some thing that she made. Ooh, so, she oh, grip lock ties worked. Night bot. Yeah, I'll watch for it. Give me a little bit of time. Give me a little bit of time. All right, Whiskers. I'm game for sharing my work on a live stream. Fantastic. All right, Whiskers is in for a live stream. Uh, likely help with SSL cert install. Oh, thank you very much, Tollbringer. Uh, Will, it's, um, because it's Will? the same guy. <laughs> um, it is, Dad, Diet Coke is being chugged in the background. That <laughs> girl's in the pink, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Wait, where? <laughs> this girl in the pink back here. This, not this one. This one probably chugged enough of it already. Hey, that's enough. I always took, like, uh, it's GoDaddy. It's GoDaddy. So let's hang out for a minute, Will. And and help me out with that. I would appreciate that very Baby much. Baby Will. Sir, good enough. Thank you for the oh, address. Baby Will. You will get some stickers, stickers. Oh, and then we got Baby NFLX. <laughs> I want Baby Will. Oh, gosh. Are you in the chat here at NFLX? Thank you, man. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. I'm going through these. Christmas? 
All right, Nick Greed. All right, Michigan, go blue. Go blue. Unless you're in the green area, then. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's do. How should we sign off? Always, always. D d mommy's mad. Like mommy's mad. <gasps> okay. As always. Okay, we'll do it. Ready? One, two, three. As, As always, always. Thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Until, Until next time. time. Oh, yes. Dawson, you're in trouble. Mommy is never mad. Never mad. <laughs> yes, All right, everybody. <laughs> you get her in trouble. <laughs> Have a great Sunday, everybody. And we'll see you again Hit next week. Hit a dad's weekend. head. <laughs> All right, take care. Adios.